Welcome to the 10 minute book talk. We are four best selling authors. We are talking about all things books. It's 10 minutes. It's short. It's sweet. And today we are is our recommendations of what we're reading this month. So we're just going to be talking about the books that we are loving. I this summer have been reading Ellen Hildebrand's Golden Girl. Oh, I love I her. Loved this yeah. book. I have loved this book. It just opens with a bang. Um, it is about an author who she's written a lot of books and she, of course, she lives in Nantucket and who doesn't love to go to Nantucket in a book? Nothing bad about this. And she is, you know, got lots of family issues, but she's like an upbeat person. I immediately connected and liked this character, but there's this crazy thing. Yeah she's gonna um, be a victim of a hit and run accident and she's going to heaven. But from heaven, she is going to be, it's a really, I know this sounds, it sounds like a sad opening and it kind of is, but at the same time, she is given a window to be able to look at things that are going on on earth with her family because she's very concerned about her kids and her family. And she has kind of three nudges that she can get. She can have this window where she opens during the summer. So from the beginning of the summer through Labor Day, and in that period of time, she is granted by her sort of angel guide, three nudges where she can move people along to something, make a different decision in their life. It is heartfelt. It is so beautifully written. What I love about Ellen Hildebrand is the way she gives you, there's a richness to the language, but she keeps that more mo story moving all the time. Just keeps your interest. Loving, loving, loving this book. If you haven't read it yet, you definitely should. So Melissa, what are you reading right now that you're loving? Well, mine's, I just finished Jenny. Okay. Let me back up. I'm, I'm finishing up a Christmas novella that I'm writing. So to get in the spirit, I've been basically listening to Christmas music. My children have been singing <laughs> Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the way to school. Like Love it's it. all Christmas all the time here. So, um, so I finished Jenny Bayless's book, The 12 Dates of Christmas, and her writing is gorgeous. And then I just started while I'm in the middle of my book, Debbie's The 12 Days of, 12 Days of Christmas. So we're in the completely the wrong season, but this You're is roll what, right in. <laughs> this is, yeah, yeah. This, the Christmas books are coming out right now. Yeah, so they, like, right. they do spice latte. Can you have too much Christmas? No. no. Can you have too much pumpkin spice latte? No. So good. Thank I disagree you. about the latte, but definitely about the Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and the no. music. So, and the music. so I guess that's true. A bunch of Christmas books are coming out truly yeah. in a matter of weeks. I think Christy Harvey has a Christmas book coming out. So 12 days of Christmas has been interesting. It's definitely like when it's a novella, it's short and it's sweet. And it's, you know, it's about basically a girl who has a really um, stiff neighbor and she decides that um, she's going to be nice to him for like 12 days and try and force this Grinch out of his Grinch-like behavior. So I'm only halfway through. Okay. We'll see how it goes, but it's really cute. I read that. I, mean, I guess it goes I well. really loved it. I did oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at y'all. Okay. Yeah. So, Catherine. Oh, okay. So I dipped a little back into history in the past couple months. This book came out in 2016 and I reread it um, because I remembered loving it and I just wanted to reacquaint myself. And it's worthy of the reacquaintance because Amor Tolls, his prose is beautiful. His world is incredible. His knowledge of history and literature and storytelling is just, it's beautiful. It's absolutely lovely. So the premise here is Count Rostov, the main character, is under house arrest come 1922 in the Metropole Hotel in Moscow and it takes you to 1954. So for those 32 years, he never, one moment he does, but he never leaves that hotel. So the whole world comes and goes through one hotel. And we often as writers talk about how important setting is. Well, think about making setting over 30 years, one hotel, how rich it can become and how changeable and, and I mean, it's just beautiful. So if you wanna immerse yourself in a really, really wonderful story, um, check this out from your library or purchase it. I loved revisiting Moscow with Count Rostov. There you go. All right, Rachel, what are you yep. reading? It's me, okay. So the one I finished that I really enjoyed and I'm only showing it on my phone because it is um, oh, Under yeah. Southern Sky 
by Christy, our, our friend Christy Woodson Harvey, who is a delightful and wonderful person, great author. Um, I love her books because they're this delightful combination of Southern, uh, really well written, uh, they move along and it just feels they're fun. They're super fun to read. It feels like eating bonbons or eating macarons or something like this delicious treat that you can eat. So it's a really, it was just enjoyable. And it was a very interesting book. It's um, explores themes of loss, grief, surrogacy, um, in, in vitro embryos, uh, but in a really lovely and heartfelt way. And so it follows a man who has lost his wife and they had uh, frozen some embryos before she died and she dies. And it's about him deciding what he's going to do. And um, with the help of a childhood friend who was kind of his childhood crush growing up. So I loved it. I just thought it was fantastic. Just like perfect plain reading, perfect take on vacation reading. Um, and I enjoyed it immensely. So that's what I'm reading. Wonderful. All right, so we have a question. We were talking earlier about whether we read more or less during the pandemic. Some people said they read a ton. Some people said they couldn't read it all. So I'm just curious, uh, did you read more or less during the pandemic, Marie? Uh, I actually read less. I really had a problem with focus. And um, when I did read, it needed to be often kind of lighter books. So it was really a struggle for me. Um, so. Yeah, Catherine, what about you? I read less too. Focus was was a struggle. Um, and I kept seeing that everyone in the world was reading but me, which made me feel guilty like a terrible oh. reader. But when I could read, I read international spy thrillers. I have never <laughs> read international spy thrillers in my life. I could not get enough of them. I think I read almost every old Gabriel Law book that Silva has written um, and Jean Le Carré and all sorts of others. There you go. I became a spy reader. That's really fun. Yeah, that's I, yeah I might read that next. Um, <laughs> as for me, we were in the middle of building a house. So my husband's a contractor. We bought the land and we spent really the year building a house. So uh, no, I, I, I didn't read my normal level either. What about you? I... I read my normal level, but I couldn't handle anything that was deep. A lot of times I, I kind of, for fun, read sort of rom-coms, British rom-coms, and then um, we'll read kind of more heavy hitting book club type, you know, New York Times bestseller mm -hmm. list. And I just, I had this whole stack of them and I would look at them for about 18 months and be like, well, I'm sure they're delightful. And now I'm going to read this rom-com. So yeah. I did read, but I just needed stuff that was feel good and stuff that made me feel like. Uh, I was living in a happy maskless world. So that was, that's what happened to my reading. And now I'm, now I'm just starting to get back into them more like, okay, now I'm ready to handle some more serious, heavy hitting books, which is delightful. Well, thank you so much everyone for being with us. Um, we're always glad when you join us and um, join us next week for more 10 minute book talk fun. And if you wanna comment below this video, we are gonna choose one winner who will win a copy, an ebook of Under the Southern Sky. And all you need to do is just uh, answer the question, did you read more or less during the pandemic? Yeah. And that's all. Thank you, join us next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.